You know, a guy like me, of course, you have your own business and you have a lot of these projects and this is your passion. If you're on the beach, you know, you could be sitting on the beach, maybe reading a book or having a snack or having a drink or whatever. My mind is still here at the shop. It's a quiet weekend morning in the industrial park around Nick's garage. But the shop is buzzing with activity as usual. Vasily is enjoying the sunshine as he works on a 69 Mustang that has been off the road for a while. Uh, I just took it out of storage. So we're doing like a little tune up, you know? Make sure everything is good. With some fresh plugs in the beautiful Mach 1, Vasily heads out for a quick road test. I'm a guy that likes rare cars, and this is something that we don't see every day. It's a clean Mustang, you know. The 69 is running smoothly once more, but Vasily notices another issue that brings him back inside the shop. Good, good. The, the, the scoop got loose. It got loose, the scoop almost lost on the road. That was flew up, bro. There we go. That's a super, super charged Shelby. Goes good. While Vasily gets to work on his second Cobra of the day, Nick is outside with the owner of the beautiful Mach 1. Here you go, 1961 Mach 1. Ain't she a beauty? 
Uh, Julian has so many cars that he's got to get used to the shifter on this one because uh, he drives so many different cars, he's got to get used to it. And he doesn't drive them very often, so... Julian, you're going to get used to it, don't worry. It's a little scary now, Nick. <laughs> you did too good of a job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you're too much, man, you're too much. After showing Julian that his Mustang is scary fast again outside the shop, Nick takes him inside to see a gorgeous Chrysler 300 with a freshly changed rear main seal that gave Nick a hard time. Usually it takes four hours, right? Okay. In this engine, we took almost 10 hours because on this block, for some reason, something jammed on the upper half of the seal and I couldn't get it out. Yeah, I only charged them seven, six hours. But I only removed the main caps on the crank. Why do you have to take off the main caps? To drop the crank, to give me that clearance to move the rear seal. Oh. It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> it took us almost, almost two days. Oh, but anyways, it's that's, done, that's it's done. done. You take a good look, there's no more oily. That's job. And everybody comes here for rear seals, you know? Oh man. It was, it was a challenge, let me tell you. Yeah. I don't think too many people go this far when I, I almost gave up on it. Anyways, I wanted to do it before I go on vacation and it's ready to go. What we've got here is a Chrysler 300 1967 convertible. It belongs to one of my clients, his name is Michel. And uh, he came in because he had a major oil leak at the rear seal with this 3D3 engine that he has temporarily in here. He has the original 440 that comes with the car as a matching number, which he plans to put back in the future. But in the meantime, he wants to drive it with the 3D3. And uh, my client here has a few of these cars, and of course, this is one of his favorites, I believe. And he loves it, he keeps it in top shape with a black interior, it's automatic, keeps it clean, drives well. And of course, right now, we're gonna take it for a ride. But we're not gonna put the top down, we'll just leave it uh, the way it is. That's how he's gonna pick it up. So I'm just interested to take it for a ride and see how it goes. And in, back in 1967, I don't know if people know, Man in His World was here in Montreal, Canada. And of course, this is the car that was built in the same year with the Expo 67 that we had here. And this is uh, the original color. It's uh, like a cream yellow color. That's the way it came from the factory. I love the rear tail lights. It's different from any other Newport or Chrysler uh, New Yorker. Look at it. This is beautiful. Check it out. And this is in great shape. All the chrome is nice. Everything's perfect, nice and straight. It runs well, it stops good. The chrome is all there, nothing's missing. And uh, you can't ask for much more than that. We spent quite a few hours on the uh, rear seal because uh, it was a rope seal that did not want to come out of its place. So what I had to do is I backed up the transmission. And of course, we took out the rear retainer. I even took out the main caps on the crankshaft so I can just drop it with the connect rods attached with the pistons, of course. I took out the main caps on the crank. I pull it down a quarter of an inch so I can take out the rope seal so I can get the rear seal done because the new one that goes in is a two-piece Viton, which we had done. But it took us some time. So now we made some tests there last night as I, after I finished the job. Everything went well. And all I want to do right now is take it for a nice drive on a beautiful day. Why don't you like these old cars? Big, heavy doors. Look at that. And of course, look at this. This is the 60s. Look at these dashes. They're so big. They're so beautiful. It's got a vacuum gauge on the console, automatic on the floor, bucket seats for a big Chrysler 300. Same thing as a Newport, New Chrysler, whatever. Chrysler New Yorker, Newport, whatever. They're all the same, but this is what it is. Beautiful. Of course, it's got 120 mile per hour sp speedometer. It's got the uh, full gauges. Well, it doesn't have fuel gauges. It's got the alternator gauge, of course. And I love what I love best. It's got this clock. I always love those clocks without being digital. You can see them at night, a day, no matter what. But this is what I like about these cars. And of course, now we're gonna take it for a spin. It's got tilt steering, which is beautiful. It runs, it stops. It's got, look at that, power disc brakes, big brake pedal. That's the way it came from the factory. And right now, let's take it for a ride. Okay, let's get going. It's for a nice drive. It's a beautiful day to take a ride. Nick, it looks good with you man that car. <laughs> Long father. Yes, sir. Oh, 
Okay, let's take it for a ride. The only thing I did on this car was just the rear seal on the crankshaft. That's all he wanted me to do. I'm just taking it for a dry ride. I already took a test this morning to see if the seal leaked, but it was all good. But uh, right now I'm just taking it for a ride to show you guys uh, what this car is all about. It's just a big Chrysler 300, 1967, with a 33 temporarily in it, when it came from the fact with a 440. But you know what? I do a lot of muscle cars, but lately, lately I've been having a lot of classics. I remember a few weeks ago, I had a 51 Chevy Deluxe, had a 55 Chrysler New Yorker, and uh, a 56 Chrysler Windsor, all in one week in my shop. And now I got the 67 Chrysler 300. So not only do we do a lot of muscle cars, I do a lot of also many classic cars. But then again, you know, they're all V8, they're old cars, and this is what the whole city knows me for. Old cars, carburetors, you know, uh, uh, non, uh, nothing electronics, you know. When you want to play with points, you want to play with carburetors, you want to play with six packs, they all come to me. And you know, this is, uh, this is what I'm all about. This is what I like doing. And of course, I enjoy driving these cars. And right now, I'm just driving it for my client to show them that the uh, oil, rear oil seal is okay. But in the meantime, let me just enjoy driving this thing for a little bit. Anyways, it's a gorgeous day. I'd love to put the top down, but it's not my car, so I left it the way the customer brought it in. And in other words, just enjoy the ride the way I'm doing it. I just hope when my client takes it, he puts the top down. And it was just nothing better than a old classic driving on a nice sunny day. And you know what, it's not all about speed. It's also about cruising, classic, you know, and uh, enjoy your day with old classic cars. And this is what I get every day at the shop. And why not? I enjoy it. This is my business. I can't ask for anything more. And of course, thank you guys for watching and taking a ride with me. And there she is, Chrysler 300. What more can you ask for on a beautiful day to drive a convertible? I just hope when the client takes it, that he puts the top down and drives it home. It is a beautiful day. There it is. Chrysler 300, 1967. Nick gets to be around all kinds of great cars, old and new. And today, while Julian is waiting for the truck to pick up his 69 Mustang from the shop, he gives Nick the keys to his somewhat newer version of Ford's pony car. Nick driving a GT350R. There we go. We're not new school, Nick. That's right. <laughs> no more old school. That's right. No more old school, Nick. I'll yeah, disappear. I'm just gonna do it like one. Yeah. I'll show it again inside you. Thumbs up. Thumbs, thumbs up, up, Nick. Thumbs up on this one. <laughs> nice, nice ride. He likes it, he likes it. Nick likes okay. it. Okay. Okay, we'll just put it on the side now. <laughs> and what we got here is modern technology. Yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. New school. And now we're going to go back to 
Old school. Here we go. And now we're back in 1969. for you, the weather stripping coming loose at speed. Never mind, everything is forgiven when this car starts making music. The flatbed is here to take the old Mustang home. But Julian asks Nick to light up the tires a little before loading the car onto the truck. And Nick is happy to oblige. First time race day, buddy. First time race day. <laughs> Chris, this car is for you, buddy. You built it with me when you were 12 years old, remember? It's your car, buddy. Enjoy it. <laughs> okay, take care, Julian. Enjoy, eh? I will. You too. Okay. You help me out, buddy. Oh, it's my job, man. You help me out. No, no, I... it's not only your job; it's your passion. It's also my pleasure. That's what I want to hear. That's, That's what right. I want to hear. That's right. There are beautiful, desirable cars on both sides of the old school, new school dividing line, and Nick loves them all. But his real passion is for the engines that make them go. Nick has plenty coming up in that department as well. Here I am, I'm planning to go on vacation and a few engines just showing up here uh, lately for me to uh, do some work on. I've got uh, Bob here who brought in his 446 pack that he had built 12 years ago by someone else and uh, he wants me to put a dyn on the uh, on a dynamometer. So Bob also gave me a list that he wants to replace the valve covers, oil pan, rear oil seal, oil pump, and a few other things. Of course, and then install the exhaust manifolds and everything, and he wants it to look factory stock for his uh, 69 uh, B body. So what I want to do here is, when I get back, I gotta remove a few things, check all the gaskets, and then I'll dress it up to look like a factory original six pack, and then put on the dynamometer and do some testing. So Bob, when I get back from vacation, we're gonna be working on it soon. And this engine was built by a shop uh, 12 years ago by uh, a shop that was exactly like mine that they uh, closed down recently. And uh, now I'm getting uh, most of their clients coming here. So we're getting uh, crowded with everything here. And of course we do old school like he, they used to do. So now that they've closed down the shop, I gotta rely on everything uh, to be done here in my own shop and we're gonna be overloaded for a while. So, but anyways, we're gonna take one thing at a time and do our best and get every customer's motor running and tuned and installed in their cars. I've got a few 440s set up to do. Then I got another 440 that I got to rebuild completely from uh, Ron who came from Northern Ontario, which is right here. There's another 446 pack that needs a complete overhaul and he wants to build exactly like my mule engine, which is like a 400, 420 horsepower, just like my uh, mule test engine in my uh, Challenger. And then uh, of course, this is a winter project. We're going to build it completely, look like an original factory motor, and of course, it's going to go on the dynamometer. And by the way, both six packs are here because of uh, viewers on YouTube that uh, 
their viewers also on my YouTube channel. They saw me, they, they, they saw that I specialize in Mopars and I dyno test all these big block Mopars, especially the 440s. And of course they found me on YouTube and now they both brought their engines here. And then I got another big block Chevy 454 for Gary from Oka, which is right here. I started to do the machine work on it, but I'm not finished yet. But when I get back, there's another project I gotta do. This owner has no car, but he wants me to build the engine, have it ready for uh, September, October. And uh, until he gets a car, my job is to get this done, built and dyno tested. And he's looking for roughly 400 to 450 horsepower. He just wants a nice driver. And uh, this is what we're gonna build for him. So as you all see, we're gonna have a few engines. Then I've got another engine here, a 440, which I didn't finish building. We had on the dyno one time, but we took it off because I need to do, uh, I ordered some thicker head gaskets for it because we got a lot of compression in this 440, which belongs to Rick with a 68 Roadrunner. And this is a backup engine. So he wants it to be uh, 600 plus horsepower. So this is the next engine also will be on the dyno when I get back. And uh, hopefully I should have the gaskets. And then I then uh, put it all together. This is the intake manifold, more per single plane that's going on Rick's 440 here with the uh, fancy green paint job. Here's the Bionic's heads that we're gonna install. They're gonna be installed with this intake with a dominator. And of course, we're looking for 600 horsepower on this one. And I can't wait to put it together, put it on the dyno, get Rick over here and start having a blast with it. And then of course, Rick has got this uh, thing with this bright green paint that he wanted it. Just like the uh, Oldsmobile engine that did that 283, he's also the same owner. He wanted the same green on the 440. So he brought me the kind of paint, and of course, we gave it the same coat of paint, just like his 283 Chevy small block. Here is the kind of paint that we used uh, to paint the engine. This is what Rick calls it, but what the real name is, Hard Rod Green from Plastico. Here it is. Then uh, I've got a three-quarter assembly on a 455 Buick for Alex, right here. I've got this one ready. I've got the push rods that came in. I've got the valve train. And I'm ready to put this on the dyno in a little while. But right now, I'm just waiting for a customer to come back in uh, in late September so we can continue on it. So then I can get set this up to go on a dynamometer. This is a Buick motor that uh, Alex wants to build uh, 500 horsepower plus on a 455 with a, with a set of aluminum heads from TA Performance in the US. So he's got them, he sent them here. I did a little porting work on it. Then, of course, we installed them on his block. And it's going to go into a 1967 Skylark. And that's Alex's dream car. The only thing is, I'm just waiting to get a neat thick mantle for it. But he told me, you know what, Nick, we'll wait until I get back. He's on vacation also. So, you know, when we get back in autumn, we're going to see what we're going to do with it. And, of course, I've got two more other engines here. I've got Joe here with the 54 Dodge Real Pace Car, 241 Hemi. I didn't work on it lately because I've had a lot of uh, jobs to do. But I'm hoping to have it on very soon uh, when I get back because I need to find a way to adapt this on a dynamometer because this is an engine from the 50s and I know the car is under full restoration it's going to take time I know the car is not ready so I guess I got time to uh, work on it later on and then again I've got Mike from New York with his other 440 satellite 66 which is here in the shop on the left and this is the one we build up as a stroker to a 500 cubic inch big block Mopar so when I get back here's another one I got to put together so we got a, we've got a few engines lined up and uh, I'll be uh, looking forward to do a lot of work when I get back because there's a lot of engines I got to finish, dyno test, deliver them or install them or whatever. But of course, I've done every engine. I try to finish every one of them. I do my best and I'm a non-stop machine and I'll do whatever I can. My body could be there or my mind is here at the shop. But you know what? You got to spend some time with the family once in a while. So we're going to be on vacation and then of course I'll be looking forward to coming back here to do all these engines and have them done for them as soon as possible. Of course it's vacation time for everybody around the world and I want to wish everybody who's going on vacation the same thing. I want to wish you guys all a good vacation wherever you're going or whatever your trip you're planning for. I want to wish you all a happy safe vacation. And don't spend all your money on vacation, save it for engine building. And you know, I started with YouTube uh, a few years back with my cameraman, and uh, now we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and I never realized we were gonna uh, hit that many, so we're very close to it right now. And of course, I wanna thank you viewers and uh, subscribers that uh, uh, got me there. So there's nothing else I can say, but a special thanks to you viewers and all of you that subscribe. And of course, please share and hit that button. And let's keep this going. Thank you all. 
And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Vic's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.